we're in a town It's cold as hell. I could do the, I could do the interview. But they can't, uh, he, he can't part. Oh. Mm. You know, that, you know, that's why I don't have a husband. I mean, they're just a pain in the butt, right? I mean, even Joey doesn't have a husband. This is, we're, we're too smart. So our, our go to meeting doesn't work? Okay. And that he's trying to participate. You don't run home, do you?
Exactly. Exactly. But everybody okay. I know in, in the states, my email goes two shots. And we live in Guam. Yes. I'm glad we live in. People like you can help us with very quickly. I just want to make sure. This is a meeting of the Consolidated Commission on Utilities for GPA and GWA matters. For the record, those present are myself, Commissioner Simon Sanchez, Commissioner Francis Santos, and Commissioner Judy Guthards. Commissioner Michael Limchaco is excused. He was going to try to participate through the GoToMeeting, but tonight our GoToMeeting is not working. So we're having problems with that. We're still live streaming on YouTube. So the public, we're out there, the public can see our meeting. So it's a public meeting. But unfortunately, we usually have GoToMeeting, and uh, Commissioner Mchaco is uh, excused from coming in tonight. He's off, off island. island. Yeah. But uh, he was, that might be him. Oh. Hello. His ears might be on island. Huh? Hello? Oh, OK. Glad we have you at least on the phone, Mike. I was just making an announcement that we are go-to meeting is not working. So therefore, uh, Commissioner Mchalko is participating by phone to our meeting. OK. First order of business is approval of minutes. This is the minutes of uh, January 26, 2021. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Somebody, second. Uh, any further discussion? No? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, Commissioner Mchalko, I heard your aye also. So it's unanimous. Next order of business is uh, the GM report for, we're going to start with GPA. Uh, we're switching the agenda because GPA doesn't have any uh, uh, issues for decision tonight. But uh, John, the floor is yours. John Th thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, as mentioned, uh, there, we don't have any issues for decision tonight. Uh, the two issues that we did uh, have for discussion last week was in the IR. I, IARP and uh, the update on the new power plan. Uh, okay. And again, also I did the GM report uh, last week. Okay. Uh, we do have two uh, updates. Uh, updates. Uh, sure. One, uh, the financials that uh, John C. can go through briefly. Sure. And the second one is uh, providing the commission with information on uh, refunding of the 2012 bonds. Sure. And again, uh, as part of our overall plan, when the new power plan comes on the line and the uh, fuel savings come through, uh, refunding was also part of that uh, waterfall uh, thing. Okay. So again, the, the, the bonds are not callable in, in, until uh, July of 2022. Uh -huh. However, there, there is potentially some opportunities due to real low interest rates that our uh, bond underwriters have uh, brought to us and we're, we're reviewing that and perhaps we can discuss it. We provide that information, provide that information and perhaps we can discuss it in the March meeting, no? If, okay. Uh, the commission will look okay. at that. So and would so be further that, discussion in March. Yeah. So with that, I can ask John to go through the CFO update sure. uh, uh, for ahead. this month and then uh, from there I can go through any and all or any of the GM's uh, report, Mr. Chair. Okay. Yes. Um, to, we'll just quickly go through the financial highlight for January. Um, for January, um, the, our monthly uh, base revenue was $12.7 million. In prior year, it was 12.8. So it's very similar to prior year. And this okay. is before the pandemic. So it's a good news. Okay. As for the um, megawatt hour sold, it was 129,000. First 20, I mean, prior year was 126,000. Uh, 126, in cost of fuel, uh, it, the, um, our revenue was $11.3 million. Um, prior year was $18.2 million. And that's because the LIAC rate is uh, cheaper uh, in January of this year. Sure. As for O&M, we had $5.6 million. 
iOS 5.5. It's very similar expense-wise also. In terms of customers, uh, we had uh, 44.5 thousand residential, 5,300 um, um, commercial. So it, the commercial went out a little, uh, little bit down by 65 customers compared to last quarter. We had about um, 1,063 uh, government and straight as 1,133. So the governor account date went down by 18, 18 customers. In terms of coverage, our seniors and aggregate was 1.7 with all our uh, uh, debt service coverage calculated including IPP and O&M. IPP as O&M was 1.56 aggregate. In terms of LIAC, um, we ended in January at 13.2. was a um, little bit better than we anticipated. Okay. It's still un uh, under recovery of $13 million. In terms of uh, next slide, um, prepaid. Uh, on February 18, we had 912 customers in prepaid uh, that are in rear. And we told our rear is about $1.26 million. So we put most of them into debt, reserving, debt recoveries. They recovery, so we have students to make payments. A small portion of them will go to the real account. Okay. Okay. So we'll move on next to the fund refunding. Yeah, we're just going to uh, uh, provide that. So. Oh, okay. okay, okay. okay. Yeah, Commissioner, we'll, we'll discuss updates. it next. Uh, Commissioner, Commissioner yeah. Sanchez, you have a question? Yes, thanks, Mr. Chairman. John, can you go back to the prior slide on the prepaid? Yeah, my question actually is more in, in general. Um, how are we doing with receivables, payment plans? Um, th there was a concern discussed at the GWA work session uh, about, you know, now that um, a number of employees are no longer eligible for PUA assistance because they're being called back to work, you know, are we starting to see any, any of that? Um, I think, uh, and Miguel, correct me if I'm wrong, it, it was ironic that the number of payment plans went down for GWA, um, even though we, we had this issue, but it went down because we weren't going to disconnect anybody, right? So why come in and make a payment plan, right? I don't know, is, is GPA seeing the same experience? Are you seeing a, a growth in receivables from, uh, I know we usually pick on the government, but you know, just overall, how is your receivable situation? Because uh, as you know, the governor ended the, um, the uh, no longer can, uh, if you're delinquent on your lease, you, you can, landlords can take action and tenants have a real headache. Um, that's a similar headache that we could face because we currently are not disconnecting anyone on, at either GP or GWA. Um, and I'm sure you're thinking about it. I know we would want to think about it. But at this, at this point, um, what are you seeing with uh, private receivables? and delinquencies and collections in general? Yes, yeah, so, uh, before the pandemic, our days average collection was about 30 days. Right now in January is about 40 days, so it's taking us a little bit longer to collect from the customers. Um, as for aging-wise, uh, like the aging over 120 has gone up for about twice the amount than before the COVID. But as in dollar amount, it's, it's not as, uh, it's no different from before. I guess the bills are a little bit lower because of the LIAC cost is lower than previously. Right, but now that the LIAC's gone up, I, mean, I, I think that's just a delay and a, a headache GWA is already mm -hmm. witnessing. Yes. Right, yes. And, and more importantly, that we're going to have to make a collective decision on our current policy of non-disconnection. Yes. Uh, that, that can't go on forever because I think the, 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 the other reality, at least based on GWA and even from what you just said, the overwhelming majority of ratepayers are paying their bills. Yes. To, to their credit, during this difficult time, they're paying their bills, but they were getting PUA and PPP and, and checks from the federal government, you know, assistance, which you know, may or may not come in in the future. We'll see. And even if it comes in, we're not sure how it's going to be applied. Uh, so we have to think about how long can we give free power to some while the great majority are paying their bill. I mean, even here, look how your, your payment plan has ballooned almost $600,000, right, in 17 days. 17 days has gone up 600000 on on the, just the prepaids, right? And the prepaids is a good uh, 
group of customers to look at, but it's only a thousand out of forty-five thousand customers. When you look at the rest, you know, you just said your receivables are now going up. Your day's receivables now gone up thirty-three percent. You know, that's that's never very good in business one hundred and one class, right? <laughs> when that starts to happen, so it's just it's it's a concern I share with the commission and you both as management. Uh, how are you thinking about this? Uh, I, I, yeah, well, I'm okay that you don't have a decision tonight, yeah. but I know uh, I, the media has already started inquiring when the governor right. released the, the moratorium on rent rent yeah. evictions. It, you know, and bank bank payments are being are no longer being waived. I mean, as as that part of the economy tries to get back to normal, we're going to be faced with a similar challenge about. How do we collect from ratepayers that are having trouble, and yet we're collecting from other ratepayers? You know, we can't keep it up. We can't. We can't give free power forever. And how are we thinking about it? Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to Unix. Um, uh, that's a good point. However, the uh, uh, again, we uh, financially we're able to, you know, even with the working capital, we're advancing on the LIAC and all of that. So it hasn't hurt us at this point. However, he, uh, you are correct, uh, and then we have to take into account uh, uh, some we're given a, a longer period of time, up to mm -hmm. one year, to pay. So how does that all flow in? No? Yeah. And so I think yeah. the government itself, if correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they've been paying uh, yeah. regularly and are so. And we had we had great that. success with payment plans, but I was yeah. uh, you know educated and, and surprised when GWA management pointed out th what they're already starting to see, right? That people are not doing payment plans because they don't need to because we're not disconnecting, but they're not paying. Mm -hmm. And so what, how do we address that, that challenge in light of a, a still very uncertain employment future and cash flow future for many, many of our ratepayers? So, I throw that out there. It's sort of a yep. there's a typhoon out there, and we know it's coming our way. And we need to think about it. How, how do we help our ratepayers and yet be responsible in terms of making sure everyone pays, pays for, for sure. their bill? I mean, yeah. you know, because yeah, that's so, a, uh, your word so is a two-edged sword. Yeah. Yeah. So for March, I think you should yeah. start giving us some heads up. And the one key I would say is whatever you're going to do when you start to now implement disconnections again i think all commissioners are going to share the fact that we w we want there to be a lot of notice and and a lot of um, re outreach to our customers so that, so that they you know maximum amount of information sharing so they know this is coming so as as you start working on your plans just make sure that in your plans is included a lot of outreach Right. And maybe one other thing, Mr. Chairman, that occurred to me, and in the many years we've all been here, we've seen this before. If you are having trouble now, come see us and yeah. establish a payment plan. Don't just blow it off. Don't just wait till the last minute. Then the lights go out. And, you know, we've, we've been through tough times before, and payment plans can help us together get through it. But to just do nothing. That, you it's know, not that, a good we, idea. Yeah, so the, the chairman's right about whatever our decisions are, we'll put it out there. But the one message I've been communicating on the media and privately is just, if you are having trouble, call GWA, call GPA, and go back to figuring out payment plans that you think you can work. None of us want to cut off service, but we, we owe it to all 100,000 power and water ratepayers that we have to all try to pay our bill because it's, it's also not fair that... 90% are paying their bill and 10% are not, you know, yeah. and, and so we, we want to try to manage that as, as best we can and help people as best we can. Okay. Commissioner Santos. What is the next voting cycle? Every month. It's every month. It's continuous. Every month. But so when, when is the next 5,000 billings going out? So it's, there's been there's been outreach on our part, and Chris has presented a, at our work session statistics on the calls, the number of calls that we've made, and so on and so forth. So we're continuing that process. We're just with regard to the, the disconnections and stuff. We are uh, 
trying to provide options and we you know the the um, rent and utility assistance uh, funding that has been made available we're still waiting on guidance so that we can also provide that to our customers and say come on uh, you know contact us to make a um, a payment plan and if you need additional assistance these are the resources these are the steps we don't have that information yet so we're, we're kind of waiting on that to, to uh, put something and together. Put down the bills already the, the yeah, end of this yeah. 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 and I think Commissioner Guthard's at the work session suggested just a, a letter from the chairman to the governor just says as you're getting these federal assistance and this uh, you, yeah. rental slash utility you know, can you can you work with the utilities because we're starting to see a growing uh, increase in in residential uh, collection challenges, and you know, that's something that the so chair I'll, can sign. I'll draft. And, yeah. I'll draft the. Yeah. 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 And like you said, social media, the the, the new GPA, Instagram, and Facebook is really very good, and I know GWA's got social media, so. Well, get the word out. We'll, we'll, we'll draft a letter and circulate it among the commissioners. Yeah. For the governor. Yeah. 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 For the governor. Yeah. Okay? I mean, yeah. yeah. You're being cautious, or we're being cautious about saying yeah. not this connection, it's can you help us and oh, yes. yeah. Help us, exactly. exactly. Okay. Help us so we can help you. Uh, again, we're asking you to start the, reach, the, the outreach now. Right. Um, so they can be informed by the mechanisms that are being discussed to help them. And you don't put it the top of the list. Yeah, raise our hand. Okay. Commissioner, we've, we've been uh, doing an outreach since the beginning. We review our and then also the they are not paying and they haven't seen us or called us and their uh, their balance is mm -hmm. called them. Mm, good, good. Good. Okay. Good. Thank, thank you, Mr. Well, Mr. Okay. Uh, uh, John report. Kim, anything else or that's GM it. Report. Just uh, you want me to just highlight some of the GM report, Mr. Chair? Sure, the sure, important sure. one. Uh, just give me no more than three minutes, and I'll be sure. done. Uh, the famous John Benventi three-minute report. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two hours later. Okay. Uh, again, most of this. Go ahead, do it again. Most of these other ones. Again, as you can see here, the sales are starting to come back. No, this okay. is 2020. The green, right? right. Okay. Uh, next, go ahead. Next. Why is it coming back? Look at your residential, no? It's no longer just a short term, it's looking like a longer term, no? That's, your average is up to 1,081, no? Okay. Here we are, consistently above, no? Next, uh, uh, here's the demographics of your customers. Uh, uh, again, uh, here, all I'm trying to do is here say that around the 18 cents to 25, four bills for your average are below $200. That seems to me over time to be the sweet spot at least of affordable uh, energy costs. No? So that's all this graph was trying to do. Next, uh, I want to go to uh, net metering, the same, it's just uh, a few every month coming on. Fuel oil continues, it's kind of leveling off a little bit around the uh, seven, $60, $70 a barrel. But again, it's still up there, it hasn't come down. Then I'd like to go. Uh, I like to go DSM uh, again. We have uh, 2,000 pending that they're working out, getting the checks every week now, and so we're ca catching up. Hopefully, within the next two months, we should be up to date on this. There are a lot of people coming in. Uh, again, PUC agenda and all of that. They are going to address the uh, the PD8 and 9 and the uh, EC amendment uh, uh, this Thursday's uh, uh, meeting. Uh, nothing on the guide plan is uh, just having a status hearing uh, status hearing uh, uh, this week no tomorrow 
Energy storage, the good news is that on March 1st, we're working on commissioning, as I mentioned earlier, we'll have a, 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 a ribbon cutting or something okay. good. So, uh, later on in March, even this uh, PUC would like to see this uh, energy storage that we have on the line. It is on the line as of yesterday and will continue to run all the way through uh, towards the commissioning on March 1st. Okay. Here's the no energy storage. This is how every, and this is the energy storage here. And I have, uh, go ahead. Here is, I'm sorry, that's, uh, this is a uh, uh, Dandan, or 25 megawatt. As you can see, it can jump from, drop from uh, 25 megawatts down to about six or seven, just like that. That puts havoc on the rest of the generators. So this is what it's doing now, you know, slow drop, blah, blah, blah. So now this is manageable. Okay, I'm gonna run all, uh, again, I'm gonna run all the way through. These are uh, giving you a picture of every day, no? Mm -hmm. Changes, uh, go ahead, all the way through. You're seeing how it's, again, it's just, it's just smoothing out everything. I wanna go to the end where we have the under frequency. Again, you see that, whenever you see black, that's good, see? And I, the reason why it's good, good is I'm going to show you right here. Uh, here it faces different stages of under frequency, the megawatts that are there. Uh, and if you look for stage one circuits here, totaling eight megawatts. So, and that's a 59.3. 59.3 is uh, right about here. So whenever that line that you see going up and down like that, it's 59.3 automatically this five circuits and then the next one is 59.11 another uh, six circuits so 11 circuits are typically the ones that get hit most of the time uh, and all of that and that is a total of about six megawatts again total of uh, 11 customers so as you can see what the the batteries does it, 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 it keeps the band within a narrow and not this up and down because any one of those uh, you know surges hits 59.3 boom automatic you're gonna drop and why to avoid a blackout huh? so we seldom get down to stage three thank you lord four or five no okay because uh okay so th that's what i wanted to do in this mr chair uh we maintain our ratings for both uh, Standard and Poor and Moody's, and and that's about the the biggest highlight for the, is that the energy storage is on the line both at Telapofo and uh, Agania, okay. and uh, March first is commissioning. No? Okay. Um, okay, so that's GPA. As we transition to the general manager for GWA, uh, Commissioner Sanchez. Did Thank you, you Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, colleagues, as, as you know, we had discussed uh, um, an issue that had emerged kind of late in the year during the holiday season, and, and we didn't really get a chance to discuss it at a body, but uh, the public auditor issued their his, his report on how we handled a pay during the emergency declarations that began early in March of last year. and. Uh, was was very critical uh, in fact uh, as, as i read the audit suggested that that perhaps there was even illegal actions that might require repayment uh, uh, improper payment was done and, and repayment would be required and i know that both managers responded and it was in the the audit but we as a body never got a chance to talk about it. Mm -hmm. We never, our management never had a chance to talk to us about it and kind of put it on the record mm -hmm. and, and allow them to, to do more than just what was included in their letter. And then if, if us as a body have any questions, uh, you know, sure. we just never had a chance. So uh, with that, we had suggested bringing up this topic uh, uh, at, at the next just board meeting, at this meeting. And so uh, we wanted to give an opportunity for Miguel and John to talk about to the commission how did they handle uh, well the, the whole issue of the OPA suggesting that we did not properly pay 
the emergency pay that at the time it was declared last March for COVID. And I think equally important is if we didn't properly pay, then that, what does that mean to us in terms of our management? And what does it mean to our employees who, if, if it's determined was not properly paid, what, what is the recourse and how are we going to handle it? All right. But, but we're not there yet. Right. Uh, Cause if I, if I read the audit correctly, the public auditor also sought guidance from the AG. Uh, I know uh, you both write of you seeking uh, some guidance from BBMR, you know, last March, uh, Department of Administration. And then we also were able to obtain later, uh, although, and it wasn't referred to in the audit, but the AG did opine uh, to Senator St. Augustine on this issue of double pay because you know, Guam wasn't paying it, we were paying it, and there was confusion, right? And the public auditor then, in his opinion, thinks that we may have acted perhaps even illegally, and if so, there's a, there's a recourse that we would have to correct. So with that in mind, we thought we would allow our, just our management to give their version on the record uh, to their views on the public auditor's comments on the way we handled pay. And whether you agree, disagree, um, what do you think the recourse is, um, uh, yeah, and, and to kind of get your feedback, and then we as a yeah. body can decide if, if we want to take any action. Uh, you know, I think we, basically a starting point would be uh, the, the AG's opinion that was issued in response to a, a request from Senator Joe S. San Augustine. That would be a good starting point because he did already opine to a degree. Now, maybe the opinion is not completely right on the point, but it's a good starting point, and you could give us the information of whether you believe that you complied with that opinion that the AG wrote back in uh, May 14th of 2020. Now, uh, maybe, John, you could start first and tell us, given that opinion from May 14th, 2020, do you believe you complied? Uh, that, that's that's correct, Mr. And why, Mr. Chair? Uh, the he had four, uh, three uh, points in that opinion on May 20, and of course, this is already also after we had opened back up, no? In, okay. Uh, May, right? Uh, again, the emergency being declared by the governor. There is uh, there is no contesting of any of that. The, the facility that the employee works is closed. We did close everything to the public. Uh, and then the third is the employee is still required to work. So everyone that worked were required to work to keep the power and energy uh, flowing. And also to address the pandemic. How do we prepare? How do we challenge? How do we keep trying to get, uh, you know, how do we make sure that the personnel at the power plant or if, if you get one, uh, what you call it, having the virus, you lose all of the operators. Therefore, that power plant is going to close. So we had to prepare facilities for sequestration. I had all kinds of team working to, again, address the pandemic emergency at hand. No? Mm -hmm. So again, we, you know, it's not all employees. Key employees who critical issues that had to be continued to address despite the, uh, within the emergency uh, period. Uh, in terms of, again, you know, there's issues about whether the language here, the language there, have comply, applies to us here. No, I'm, not, I'm not really contesting all that. I am, I am giving you the reason uh, for my decision, and I'll leave it at that, no? because I'm, uh, I, I can, we can agree to disagree. Uh, who is the final authority on this? Uh, I don't know, you know what oh. I mean? But I can just tell you as a commission, uh, how I made my decision, no? Mm. So, and John, just yeah. one thing for for clarity. In in the Attorney General's opinion, it it says that the appointing authority shall determine. So I want to highlight that too. That, that basically the call is the appointing authority is the general manager. That, that's correct, Mr. Okay. Chair. Uh, that's my understanding. Yeah. Sure. Uh, for this matter tonight? Yeah. No, I didn't get one from. You. Yeah. I so, will go on record then, legal counsel. We want a written legal opinion on the appointing authority as noted in the 
friend and brother. We, we need to know. Do you have one? Yeah. From outside counsel. No, no, no. I don't want it. Yeah, Are you guys conflicted? Yeah. yeah. I can't. I, I have the money. Okay. Interesting. So, so, so we. That's why we put them on the outside counsel. That's why we both refer to the outside counsel because. I'm sorry, we do have that one. Okay. So we're done with that. So that issue is done. Okay. 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 So uh, the next block that I've given you is really the different uh, types of operation that uh, we have gone through. Uh -huh. The first is normal operation, and again, you pay per, uh, personnel regular, and then up to 40 hours, and then you pay them overtime. Uh, the second, I'm sorry, that one check mark there shouldn't be there in the middle at one time. It's just the regular hour, then overtime. On holidays, no, you play the uh, all employees one time, and those essential workers on the right side are coming to work, you pay them one time more, up to 40 hours. And then from there, you pay the time and a half. Typhoon, the same thing, when core one is declared, everyone sent home, you have you pay your personnel that are home administrative leave like everybody else and then those that come to work you pay one time up to 40 hours and after 40 hours it's overtime uh the same thing that happened in the pandemic everyone so when you say was, one time is that double time or i mean we see there's this i uh, you know I mean, what did we end up doing? I don't, I don't really don't, checks, they care about double time or, you know, it, the numbers don't add up. You get a double time or a double and a half when you say right, overtime. Depending on overtime, right. So, really, when we place an administrative leave, that's everyone having their regular pay. Right, right, right. So, you pay them one more, one more, just like a holiday. That's the double pay. That's what everyone seems to be calling double pay, right? The way right? we did for typhoons. Okay, so that's the one. And then up to 40 hours, then you pay time and a half. That's over. Yeah. So the same thing with the, the pandemic, no? We only pull in essential uh, employees, and again, as, uh, subject to other opinion, legal opinion now on the appointing authority. And I think I, I, I can try to say really in an emergency, the general manager is giving authority to do various things to correct the, the you know, the situation in the emergency. but. Be it as it may, I followed the same the same pattern and everything. So there's no there's no difference really of how we dealt with the emergency, whether it's a typhoon, a pandemic, and all of that. Now, and again, typhoon period we've had we went for six eight months. No, this is not the case anymore. We can go maybe two months for a typhoon. So we were still within a reasonable period of time. And again, I was concerned also that if you go and make a different pay situation, uh, you could be liable really for a suit that bring your total. Remember, I, I think I mentioned something to the commission about potentially you could have this liability that end up later on that, of course, we didn't plan for, and I didn't, I didn't want any of that. But again. That's all I can really want to okay. say now, Mr. Chair, is that you know I, I followed uh, uh, all the practices and I, we complied. Uh, as far as I see, uh, we've complied with the age. We we fall within the uh, criteria set by the. Okay. Do the commissioners wish to ask any questions of the general manager right now, or do you wish to hear from GP, GWA okay. and then ask questions at that point? Okay. I'm okay to listen. Okay, so now Miguel, on your side. Did you comply with the May uh, 14, 2020, to the best of your knowledge? For, for the criteria that were specified uh, in the AG's opinion uh, to apply Rule 8.406, which is in our personnel rules and regulations, we did meet all the criteria. The, the emergency was declared, the facilities were closed to the public, and essential employees were required to report for duty, and th those that did report for duty were paid double time in accordance with the, the rule. So yes, we okay. were in compliance. With okay. That. So basically, you're in this. You're you're saying that you believe you've complied. You're the appointing authority. 
That's correct. So you believe you've, you've complied with... And, and it was administered in the same manner that it had been administered previ for previous emergencies. So granted, the public health emergency for the pandemic was different From the than natural disasters. natural disasters like typhoons, but the application of the rule was the, was same. the same with That's all the conditions and criteria okay. being the same. Okay. Um, we do have... Um, I do, did, I do have additional information on our, I was previously asked to, to kind of walk through our decision-making process, and so uh, I have slides on that if the board would care sure. to see it. Sure, go ahead. No, you can go ahead and do it on that. Just one Commissioner question. Santos, yes. In, in our personal rules and regs, are, are there specific definitions for an essential employee and are they listed it's not listed by uh work type or no it's it's based on the uh, what the needs are to operate the system depending so for on example, the appointing authority yeah so it, it it's not fixed there's there's discretion there as to who who we need to come in because the, the task may be different to keep the system running okay and that's given you determine that. That's example, right. On a that's right. So, as as an example, you you could example during a typhoon emergency, uh, one of you could say, "I need to do an emergency procurement." So you bring in your procurement people to do that procurement. Yeah. Or or, so, or for example, the distribution system operators need to be on need to be at their duty stations. However, the treatment plant personnel, the wastewater treatment plant personnel, may not be required to report to duty. During during the typhoon, so depending on your right, your, on your assessment of your needs, right? Okay, um, that's why you're the general manager. So just to walk through the 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 OPA report and the findings uh, to start. Okay. Oh. Having technical difficulties. <laughs> well, we we have. The, I tell you what, Miguel, we have the presentation in okay. hard copy. Okay. So you just can walk walk us through it, and we'll just make sure we post it later. Okay. On the web. So uh, on the first page, the findings of the report. Um, yeah. This is this this uh, summary of the OPA's report, and essentially for GWA, uh, the amount that was spent on double pay is one million, and then um, that were not paid out of any COVID relief funds, and then there was other pay that was utilized. Uh, for us, it was the compensatory time off in lieu of uh, double pay. Right, so that's is that also discretionary when you use compensatory? It's versus part of it's called out in Rule Eight Four Zero Six. You could either pay double pay or straight so time. So management has the discretion yes. un under the law. Okay. So and and then the um, second slide is the uh, detailed uh, table in, in the OPA's report, pointing out the amounts for double pay and then the equivalent amount for <laughs> other pay, which was. Uh, uh, one million and five hundred thousand, respectively. Um, and then the OPA did acknowledge that there were conflicting requirements. Uh, they point that out uh, in the highlighted section on the third slide, uh, where it says GWA sought guidance from DOA regarding conflicting provisions. Um, and the language that I'd like to point out in the report that the conflicts were not resolved, and for that re for that reason. The OPA is questioning the applicability of the one million that was paid in double pay for did, did the OPA take a position on which law he thought should have been followed? Because, no. and, so the OPA didn't uh, recognize that there was a conflict. Recognize that the conflict was not resolved. Yeah, recognize that it wasn't resolved, but still question its applicability. Right. 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 So that's you know, and it's that kind of mixed messaging that. I want to assure ratepayers that we, both our management team and our legal team and everyone involved looked at this thing and even the OPA is admitting there is, there are conflicts that were not resolved, but 
I, I guess the, the lack of comfort I had was, since these conflicts were, weren't resolved, I wouldn't have said, therefore you did something wrong. I would have said the conflicts weren't resolved. And, and I do know that the OPA did, did and still asked the AG to look into it. And, and maybe we too will join in that chorus to get a ruling. But uh, just so make sure I'm understanding your presentation here, the OPA admitted there was a conflict in law and just questioned which choice we made without determining on his own which choice he would have made. I think that's Is that a fair description of right. at least how you understand? Right. That's the way I understood it. You know, I'm a, there's a conflict in the law, and I'm accusing you guys of breaking the law, even though I'm not sure because there's a conflict. Yeah. So the, the conflict, we think, is that the, both the Rule 8.406 applies, and because the executive orders did not suspend it, mm -hmm. the, the executive order 2020-08, which was the COVID-19 differential payout, would also apply. So, are they? Are we recognize that conflict, and we ask uh, in the next slide. You can see the chronology. Um, we ask for clarification and guidance on that specific point. So, after the um, we we ask for once the emergency declaration was declared, we ask for uh, guidance on how to handle payroll based on the rules, which were which applied. They said we're working on getting guidance. Uh, it's forthcoming, and then the governor issued the uh, COVID-19 differential pay executive order. Uh, and then after we received it, we immediately said, hey, well, there, there's conflicting provisions here. This is the specifics that we're concerned about. And they said we recognize, DOA said we, we recognize that there is uh, confusion there. We're seeking legal, uh, legal opinion, and we'll share that with you. But there was no uh, resolution to the conflict, and they told us what they were going to do. But it didn't didn't speak to the resolution of that conflict. And, and one of your key conclusions, correct me if I'm wrong, was that when the governor issued her executive order, uh, unlike other part bodies of law that she suspended, which she has the right to do, she did not specifically. She was silent on this issue of double <laughs> double pay. She did not. She didn't. Well, I'm not. She wasn't silent. She didn't suspend it. There was no sus sus right. specific suspension of this provision of, of the, the double personnel provision, provision, which leaves all management, and ours in particular, wondering. So, which which law do we follow? Which and you do which you actually? Do we follow? Yeah. And you reached out to DOA and BBMR. And, right. And, we go to the next slide. So this this is kind of the the sequence of events here. Um, so what with uh, EO twenty twenty dash oh three, the emergency was declared. Um, EO4 closed the facilities, the government to the public, including ours, right? So at that point, our interpretation was that Rule 8406 does apply uh, for the people that we call in to report to duty. We requested, subsequent to that, we requested input from DOA, um, guidance on, on how to handle payroll. Uh, we followed up on March 26th. Uh, we requested the, in the input on March 21st. We followed up on March 26th. On the 26th, they said the guidance will be forthcoming. We followed up on April 2nd. And then on April 5th, they, the governor issued the COVID pay differential. Um, and then there was some guidance from DOA, uh, which didn't really clear up the, the conflict for us. So then we went back to them specifically with our concerns on April 7th, we go to the next slide. This is an excerpt of the email that we sent to DOA identifying that um, the executive order did not specifically address or reference the existing personnel rule and regulation. Specifically, we're talking about um, 8.406. Uh, and then we pointed out that the, what they did require and which would affect us, we thought, would be the Category 2 or the Category 3. Um, portions of the COVID differential. And so our initial question is, as far as we can tell, they both still apply. Are they supposed to be added to each other or are they supposed to be Substitute one or the other? Yeah. And there was not a specific suspension of the personnel rules in Reg 8.406. Even though the governor has the authority to do that, there, there was no specific uh, suspension of that. So, you know, with these two conflicting <laughs> conflicting provisions, you know, what do we do? And um, moving on to the next slide. 
We did not get they acknowledged a the conflict. They said they were seeking legal guidance, but there was no resolution in our phone call with them on April 8th. So that left us with the decision with payroll approaching of having to make a decision. And so we applied these, these decision points. If we follow the COVID pay differential, does it meet the provisions of 8.406? And the answer to that, if, if it's yes, then we will follow the executive order. But the answer was no, because the, the rule requires two times pay. And if we follow the executive order, we're only at 1.25. So we're, we don't meet the intent. So the next decision point is, well, does following personnel rule 8.406 satisfy the executive order. Well, it exceeds the two times exceeds the requirement what would have been required of 1.25. And so being faced with two conflicting provisions, we chose to follow the rule which satisfied the intent of both the executive order and kept us in uh, in compliance with uh, the personnel rules and regulations. So that's what we that's what we followed. And if you look on the, the following slides, this kind of just lays out on, its, on calendar format uh, when we, the public health emergency began, when we were, uh, were asking for guidance, and when the guidance was provided. So all of the uh, green entries are uh, the executive action by the governor, the blue items are action by GWA and the red items are uh, DOA's actions. Commissioner Sanchez. So, uh, and John, is this similar to the way your team looked at it as well? I think Miguel's laid it out clearly. So, yeah, and we had some interaction draw this period of time. So, so the debate was not whether to pay a differential pay. The debate became what the differential pay should be because the governor did not suspend the payment of differential pay that is allowed during an emergency by law. At a, at a at a rate that could be that is double pay, but she did issue a subsequent uh, executive order setting a different rate of reimbursement. But she did not suspend the current law, uh, which allows for double pay versus right. one and a quarter, one one five, and so that that's the conflict. And the OPA acknowledged that, that there is a there is a conflict, but uh, it, it seems to me and that you both were operating under the. The understanding then that, given given the con given the conflict, but given the absence of the governor suspending the double pay law rules and regs and law 806, you were left to implement that law. That's the one you chose to implement. So, um, and I, and I think that's that, that's an important distinction to understand is that you believe you followed the law that has been on the books ever since we've had disasters, right? And that law was not suspended by the governor in her executive orders where, and she has demonstrated she can suspend and she has suspended portions of law she felt appropriate in declaring executive orders. But in this case, when it came to the, the rate of pay, she did not suspend the old law. So it clearly was legal either way to pay additional pay. If you interpreted the governor's way, you would have paid one and a quarter, one one five, you know, a different right, percentage. The criteria were met, right? Yes. Right. Or if you did what you did, you paid you paid under the, the existing law that was not suspended. Either decision required you to pay additional pay during an emergency, correct? Whether you went with the governor's interpret the governor's EO, which didn't waive the old law but did set a different rate, or you went with existing law both required you to pay additional pay. So, so there's no issue that employees called into work, a lineman working during COVID in a truck with another lineman where they're at risk for giving COVID to each other, someone going to work at a pump station, they are at risk, just like a typhoon blowing 100 miles an hour. And Guam law says you need to compensate people during those types of emergency. And that's what you chose to do. The governor's EO also said you should compensate people. The difference, in, the difference was the rate. But in, under either scenario, it was legal to pay additional pay to those that had to report to work in a facility that was otherwise closed to the public at the direction of the, what's the right phrase? The authority? The, 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 under the appointing authority. Appointing authority, right? For all those circumstances, 
It is why GPA and GWA chose to pay the additional pay because it's, it was clearly required by either the EO or Section 806. Is, is, am I understanding it correctly? Well, yeah, and, uh, and again, with me, it's back to how do we pay employees in disasters? Now, I, uh, you know, 25% differential, I've never heard of in that. This is the first time it ever came up a different What I've heard is that when people stay home, those because to keep them safe and everything, they get paid regular. They, you know, there's no fault of their own. Those that have to work, you have a set way to pay them. Now, what makes 75% uh, or this and that be the fair pay? I don't know, but all I know is that this has been fair pay and that been treatment of all our employees over all the years. And they got the job done. They were, they were you know, they were, I didn't, we didn't want to, uh, I didn't want any other issues on their head other than get the job done, which they did. And the power was not a problem, and finances was not a problem. Uh, the authority. Well, the only question was, what is the rate of pay? Right. In and fact, even the governor, the he, no one contemplated not paying our people that reported to work. The uh, the confusion, the conflict that even the OPA acknowledged was what, should, what was the proper rate of pay. Because one law says uh, double pay, the other law said 125%, 115% depending on a certain job classification. Those, that's the conflict. But neither said don't pay anybody anything. So, um, and, and then the OPA has, has identified the differential of a million dollars, right? Uh, but the OPA did recommend that we reach out to the Attorney General, I guess, to kind of resolve this because, as you pointed out in the May letter, as long as the authority declares the facility closed to the public, then and, and you follow the rule you follow. Uh, I'd like just to yeah, point out that ahead. we all of the decision making was done prior to the AG's opinion coming out, right? So made, we know whatever that. guidance was there, right. we made the decision in March, done. and the decision, the AG came out in May. Right. Right. And once the facilities were open to the public, then that provision stopped. Right. So that was for like so, 45 days. Okay, Commissioner Santos. So I, I'm just, oh, okay. Thank you, Miguel and uh, John B. But the, I guess moving forward is, although we can set our own personnel rules and rates, right? I mean, that's, that's the authority given to us. Why do we have to report to DOA? I'm a little bit confused about but that. Not, not report. Or no, I mean, why do we even need their guidance? Because mm -hmm. I think we adopted their... No, again, I, I got all that. Okay. But in the end, we're on our own, right? I mean, we, we need to make a decision for ourselves. Right. Notwithstanding what DOA says, uh, because right now there's obviously a conflict between the rule and the executive order. At least that's the way it's being presented. So which one supersedes? Personnel rules and regs or the governor's EO? And which, which one's on top? Miguel? That was the question. No, I mean, I, and again, no, so we, you I, made a decision, Miguel. Yeah. What so was your decision my, and why? My decision was to follow the, the existing personnel rule and regulation because it if we followed that, we still met the intent of what did, was in the executive order. We exceeded it. Now, and you met the law, the existing rule. Yeah. Right? Because yeah, both yeah. have said pay extra pay. Yeah. Yeah, argument but, was, what's the rate? Yeah, but I'm still going back as to which, which one is on top, uh, Graham or Kelly? Which is executive order supersedes personnel rules and regs, or we fall back on personnel rules and regs notwithstanding what the governor is ordering us to do. It's, it's clear that, that there is a rescinding. Yeah. 8.46 was rescinded. But, but she didn't do that. Okay, and so. That, that was why Miguel, that's why he was talking to DOA, he was trying to clarify yeah. the, the executive order, not, not the law. And I, and I think you recognize the issue, therefore, right. done, right? He didn't have time to go back down and said, I think we made an error here, governor. Uh, we should go back and try to fix this. So, I guess I'm coming back to Mr. Chairman and colleagues is 
We're here to support the decision that was made. Sure. Okay, notwithstanding that, we still need the AG to like, review, for do me, whatever. It's, it's whatever, right? I mean, he may just follow the opinion that he just said, yeah. and then we just right. come back and, and, and say, okay, Deal with it. you know, yeah. we're, we're, we, we felt we were within yeah. that, and um, I don't know if we have a duty to respond to the OPA. Uh, he, I he, think I think both general managers already responded to the OPA uh, concerns. Yeah, and the OPA made a uh, decision to seek a review by the attorney general. So I think basically that's where the ball is, and and if the attorney general continues to opine the same way, I I believe that the general managers acted prudently mm -hmm. because they followed the law as they saw it, nobody said, don't follow that law. And even the, the Attorney General, in his May opinion, said if you follow the law and these criteria are met, then you pay double pay. Double pay. Right. So that's the safest route to be. I think that's what uh, General Manager Miguel Bordali was saying. He wanted to make sure he was safe, and, and so that's what he did. Right. So but, I think that's where we are. Um, I think we are really... I think for us, we've clarified it, and and uh, what we need is, you know, I don't know when the AG will get around, you know, to the next opinion. To the next, I guess yeah. my, my next question is, is you know, for the sake of clarity for our general managers moving forward, I, I guess it's, it's we're, we're our own country. I mean, that's what, you know, for the most part, people either like us or hate us because we don't report to anybody but ourselves. And that works both ways, obviously, today in the situation we're looking at. But I, what I, I think, in all fairness to Miguel and John B. and the team that sat down and, and collectively made these decisions, we need to give them that clarity, basically saying, hey, when it comes time and there's a decision going to be made, you make the decision and What's thank you for your And we were going to support that because I'm not, I, I understand where Commissioner Sanchez is coming from, but notwithstanding the fact that you know we're still waiting for an opinion the court the, the the court of public opinion has basically said we did wrong and i don't you know i mean for me it's you know while we wait again for the attorney general which to me i don't think he's it's going to change the issue we just need to decide once and for all let's get this resolved at our level because yeah. that's really ultimately our decision to make in support of what you've already given us as your justification because all we want to do is we know there's another coming another pandemic is going to hit us when we don't know and then I, I just have some confusion about what we call an office when it's closed because you don't shut down the power plant you don't shut down the water right. wells you don't shut down the pump stations yeah the key phrase is open to the yeah. public so that that Those to are not me open is, to the public is an, is an interesting well, phrase right I, so it, it, it and he clearly said it you, because you didn't shut down the hospital, you can't get double pay, yet every single nurse and doctor and worker in there was absolutely exposed to the COVID. Yeah. And you know what? Tough luck because your no. location and your public building was not closed. So, you know, I mean, I, I, I hope some of the senators are listening. They got to fix that because tomorrow we can have another variant in our in our in our backyard, as we call it, and we might have to shut down again. I mean, I, nobody knows that, but I think what I'm asking, uh, Mr. Chairman, is notwithstanding what or why wait for what the legal, uh, I mean, the Attorney General is going to call it, to tell us, because I don't think he's going to change his opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, he clearly said it at the end. It's a policy issue. Mm -hmm. Go talk to the senators. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. He, yep. he told them they said they could so, change it. Yep. So what's the use of waiting, Mr. Chairman? We don't have to wait for the senators to fix this one. To fix the issue that we're trying to decide today. Okay. We just got to say, this is the route we want to take. We follow the Yeah, law. follow this and just check off the marks. And, and um, so I would ask that at the uh, March session, you come back to us with the joint resolution, basically saying, we've done enough on this matter. Please consider the following and we'll set the, basically set the tone 
Therefore, there's no issue for you and John B and the rest of your team say, oh my God, I don't know. This is it. The CCU has decided what we're going to do and move on. Because we're not, we can't, we're not, we, this issue, we got to put it to rest because it, it's not a typhoon today. Okay? It's not an earthquake. It's not a tsunami. We don't know what natural disaster is going to come to us. And I, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't like the employees right now thinking that, you know, did, did we make a mistake? You don't feel you made a mistake. I, I do not feel that we made a okay. mistake. Okay. And right now, we're in support of that. Yep. So let's just go ahead, come back to us in March, and say, we're here. Would you please bless this today? To give us your vote of confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Commissioner Sanchez, you want to say yeah. something? No, I, I totally agree with uh, Commissioner Santos uh, about our goal. You know, is first off, I think today we put on the record our yeah. management's position. We've discussed it at our level, and I, I reached the same conclusion Commissioner Santos makes that with the knowledge you had at the time, you implemented what you thought was the correct line of action. Even today, you have a solid basis. Maybe a court of law or an, yeah. uh, an attorney general. Really, even if the attorney general finds, you know, until the court finds, it's still just another attorney's opinion, right? An important attorney, but still, it can be challenged, right? right. And uh, but at the time, and as you pointed out, Miguel. You and John are making these decisions in March. The AG didn't even take a shot at it till May. You had three or four payrolls to decide, what am I paying these people, right? A, a quarter pay, 100% double pay, you know, what? and you had to make a call. But I also share the concern that Commissioner Santos points out. You know, one is, uh, I, I'm confident now, and I'm glad we put it on the record yeah. with your decisions, but if indeed we erred, if it's ever held by a court of law that we've erred, I worry about our employees who were paid in good faith, took their pay in good faith, but if they're going to be forced to pay it back, we, we need to know that. We need to, you know, and, and that's where whether they clear it up in the law or someone sues somebody to get a court to say those employees should not have been paid. Uh, uh, I, I totally agree with you that I'm comfortable with the decision of management given the facts at the time and the uncertainties at the time. and. Uh, the, now, in, in fairness to the EOPA, he, he did put on his audit recommendations is to still to try to get an opinion from the AG specific to this. And, and in many ways, we can team with the OPA. We can discuss, do we want to ask the AG, hey, the OPA wants an opinion. I, I'm worried. I don't want somebody showing up two years from now saying 100 GPA employees and GWA employees have to pay back something from two years ago. That, that's, that's not fair either, right? So... Um, so, so I'll just leave it at that. I, I, my, it's our goal was to get this on the record. Okay. And, and so and I'm with Commissioner Santos. An action item I'm, in March. I'm confident you guys come back to us in March and okay. recommend what you want. What okay. you want done. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Moving right along. Thank you, colleagues. John, John, I think thank you're you. done. Yep. Thank you. And we're going to go to Miguel. Thank your you. resolutions. Uh, okay. I just want to point out two uh, uh, changes to the management report on page 33. Oh, okay. <laughs> of board books, we just uh, corrected the date on the workforce availability report, and then on page 48, uh, on the court order summary, we put in the date that we received the uh, order from the district court uh, extending the deadline for completion of the compliance requirements. Okay, so th those are the only two Thank changes. You. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on to the resolutions, Mr. Chair. The resolution, please. Uh, first one is uh, resolution 09 FY 2021, and this is in regard to uh, approval of a change order number two for the pressure zone realignment project. Uh, if you recall, during the work session, we discussed that um, the recent frequent outages uh, or breaks at the Nimitz Hill area necessitated some temporary. Um, work for us to get the pressures within acceptable ranges to prevent these breaks from happening uh, but the affected pipe work is older uh, acp pipe that needs to be replaced and mm -hmm. uh, the permanent uh, pressures pressure reducing valves uh, are part of this project so we're, we would like a change order to add the pipeline work which is related to to that uh, installation of the prv uh, and that cost is 79 roughly eighty thousand dollars and then also okay. um, to uh, authorize the uh, design engineers to be 
to provide construction management services uh, for f phase two of the pressure zone realignment plan. Okay. So the total we're seeking uh, is an additional $294. Uh, $1,000. Okay, Mr. Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve a re GWA Resolution 09-FY 2021 relative to the approval of change order number two for the pressure zone realignment. Second, Commissioner Santos. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And Commissioner Nimtaku, aye. are you? Aye. Okay, so five ayes. Okay, next one, Miguel. Resolution 10 FY 2021 is um, seeking approval for additional funding for the uh, tank repair and bypass project. Uh, this is uh, uh, to complete our court order requirements. Uh, mm -hmm. If you recall, we issued a contract previously for some of this work and we did have in uh, the bid documents, additive bid items um, for major repairs if they were required. Mm -hmm. At the time that the contract was bid, we did not know whether they were required or not because we needed to take the, the tanks offline yeah. in order to inspect them. Now that that has been done, there are two reservoirs which require major repairs and we are seeking uh, authorization to approve those, the change order to add those uh, additive bid items to the contract. Uh, the total amount for both additive bids for the Malolo tank and the Windward Hills tank are, uh, is 2.226 million. Yeah. And we're requesting a 15% contingency on top of that for a total additional funding request of 2.56 million. Okay. So moved. It's moved. Second. By, second by Commissioner Sanchez. Um, these are part of the court order, right? That's correct. Okay. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Commissioner Mtalko? Aye. Okay. Five ayes. Okay, next the, one, Miguel. The last resolution uh, is Resolution 11-FY 2021. Uh, and as we discussed at the work session, this is seeking your approval to establish the GWA Rate Stabilization Fund uh, in order to uh, allow us the opportunity at some future date to um, set aside up to 11.4 million um, in the Rate Stabilization Fund so that we can uh, set this aside and, and uh, augment our revenues to make sure that we meet our debt, debt service, service coverage, coverage requirements. Okay. okay. So move, Mr. Chairman. So move, second. Second, Commissioner Sanchez. Yes. Any further discussion? None. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Commissioner Mtalko? Aye. Okay, five unanimous, five ayes unanimous. And that does it for you, right, Miguel? Yes, sir. Okay. Anything else on the agenda that we need to talk about? No. Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. We're adjourned. Thank you Thank very you. much, Thank Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner Taco. Okay. Good night.